Hey guys, Sean hey. Hammond with PremierGuitar.com here with another one of our Summer Gear Slam demo videos. We've got Matt from Gibson. I'm in my basement in Cedar Rapids, and Matt, you're in at uh, Gibson headquarters in Nashville, right? That's right. Yeah, I'm actually at our. Uh, it's called GBOT, Gibson Business Operations Center. So, uh -huh. Yeah, it's a mouthful. GBOT. Yeah, <laughs> yeah GBOT. Oh, GBOT. Cool. We couldn't come up with a better acronym. Apparently. <laughs> cool. Cool. Um, so you guys are showing us a few new models that are coming out soon, or maybe they're already out even. The first one is this Les Paul. You want to tell us about it? Yeah. So obviously with, with, you know, the pandemic and, and the crazy year that 2020 has been, uh, we haven't really had a chance to, to really, uh, talk about some amazing stories with our products this year. And, and the lead one is really talking about the 60th anniversary of the 1960 Les Paul standard. So this is a model that, uh, is it's the same model as a 1959 Les Paul st standard or a 1958 Les Paul standard, but the reason we have uh, year by year differences is because they were very different year to year. So in 1960, you've got three distinct versions throughout the year. The first version was spec wise the same as a 59 reissue. The only difference is the serial number. Uh, the second version is kind of the in betweener. It's got the neck profile that's not super skinny yet, and then the colors start to go from like that the fading aniline dye reds to that brighter uh, tomato soup color, we call it. And then the, the final version, the, the summers get really tight like this one. So this I'm holding a version three. And for a while that on the collectible market, the 1960 Les Pauls didn't really hold their value the same way that a 59 did just because of the, the association with all the famous musicians who played a 59. But a lot of famous musicians played 1960. I mean, Joe Walsh, uh, probably most, most famously, and a lot of uh, guys played uh, early 1960s, and, and really there's different uh, Les Pauls for different styles of play because of that neck profile. But some of the other appointment features you'll see in 1960, uh, the la later part of 1960, are these reflector knobs. And again, because we're reissuing these through Custom Shop, these are going to be like historic clones through and through. So we've got the plastics that were chemically re-engineered from the original plastics and gold painted under the knobs like the originals and we redeveloped these knobs specifically for this model like that's the level of detail we're talking about at custom shop but again so, so f as departures from 59 again it's mainly the finish on this one and then the uh, neck profile is a little bit that's right yeah so it gets or? they get thinner as you progress through 1960 so version one going to be one of the fatter 59 styles uh, version two, like I said, the in between 1959 and 1960. So, really comfortable profile. That's our probably our most popular 60th mm -hmm. anniversary model. And then version three, I actually love, and I chose a, a version three today because you play differently on it. The neck is super, super skinny. It's like so. It's a lot skinnier uh, than most people are used to feeling on a yeah, Les Paul. Exactly. At the first fret, I think the measurement is something like 0.77 on this one, which is like, I mean, to a lot of people would be paper thin, but you you do play different. And compared to a big fat neck guitar, you may not have the bending leverage, but it certainly feels like you're playing a lot faster, like a shredder guitar mm -hmm. almost. So that's how you fun. how you feel like it affects your playing. Is it makes you have feel like you have? It more makes dexterity. me play faster. Yeah. yeah, it makes me make more more mistakes faster. That's <laughs> perfect. That's the difference. Yeah. <laughs> um, so these are limited edition, or is there a certain? Is it yeah, just on so a they, custom order basis? or We are only making these in this year, this being the 60th anniversary. So they are limited to uh, the year 2020. But and we otherwise, did that last just year. as many as you guys can make, as many orders as you get in, in the Exactly. Year. Well, I mean, within reason, because we're, uh, you know, we only have limited capacity to build at custom shops. So get them while you can, really. Right. Um, How, and when we've it, got so many other great models, too. Do you have a ballpark, just out of curiosity, for how many in similar situations like this in the past how many roughly you end up making is it just like a few hundred or um it's probably more than that i don't i don't know exactly um but i know that like you know in terms of specific limited editions the largest limited edition that we'll do quantity wise is like 300 out of custom shop oh wow so if that's a a good reference, but it's, okay. I mean, more than that, it's going to take us probably more than a year to build that special run or artist run okay. or whatever it may be that's okay. limited. Now, what about but, pickups uh, in this one? Are they 
burst buckers or so all the electronics are the new electronics that we developed last year for the 60th anniversary 59 models so those those are still in circulation again we're not making them anymore uh, you still, can still find some at dealers but those were were special because we had 10 different distinct finishes uh, on those whereas these have uh, six different finishes over those three different versions um, but all the electronics are the newly developed uh, uh, pickups pots and potentiometers, oh, sorry, and uh, capacitors. So we've got the new potentiometers, which you, and I'll, I'll play a little demo here, but you can hear all the way down to one on these potentiometers and it just cleans up. So and that's just, the bridge pickup, right? That's the bridge pickup, yeah. And, nice I mean, clarity on that. It, it's so great. I mean, these the electronics are everything. So that was one of my big crusades at Custom Shop the last few years is if we can really dial in the electronics of these guitars, we've got the construction elements down. And we're scanning original models, and we know that we're you know just a, a hairs away from uh, replicating every single element of these original guitars. So now we had a chance in 2019 to dive into the electronics too. So that's, that's the potentiometers that you're hearing there. Uh, we call them vintage taper potentiometers. And then we've also got uh, capacitors now that are, are real paper and oil capacitors, so just like the original capacitors. And so those, um, a good way to demonstrate that is to get that Eric Clapton woman tone. And when you roll back the, uh, the tone knob all the way, you can really get that, that kind of smooth, overdriven, real bass heavy sound. Sweet. So it's very, very bass heavy. Um, but that's then you're hearing the the capacitors, the paper and oil capacitors, and then the pickups. When you mention the clarity, are uh, all of our pickups now uh, at Custom Shop? All of these custom buckers are unpotted, so there's no wax potting oh, wow. anymore. It was a risk because obviously people wax pot pickups for a reason right. to avoid some some feedback but we believe that we're really trying to recreate the vintage ownership experience and a lot of times people like that little bit of feedback that you get and the little squeal that you get mm -hmm. out of these pickups and really it's completely manageable as somebody who has a marshal at home and i've got custom buckers playing through that thing and if if i get a little bit of feedback i try to just you know lean into it because it sounds it sounds like that era of sound because so. you sacrifice anyway if you the more you pot them, um, you would know far more than I do, but the more you pot them, the more you kind of sacrifice the articulation and high end, right? Yes, and I mean, there, the jury's out on like how much it actually affects uh, the sound because obviously we've made some fantastic instruments that have had wax potted pickups and we still make instruments that have wax potted pickups, but it's uh, when you're describing like the nuances of a PAF pickup or a patent applied for 1950s original humbucker, a lot of times you hear people mention that like squeak and bloom and you hear all these like buzzwords that are kind of those intangible elements around the fact that the pickup was uh, very uh, uh, likely to feed back at mm -hmm. high volumes. So I, I can show you a little bit of that clarity though that, yeah. that you get out of these pickups. So this is the, the lead pickup here. And when you roll off the, that potentiometer, you don't lose any uh, treble. It still stays nice and clean. But the key to a great pickup, I think, is hearing every note within the chord. And so, yeah, that's to me, that's classic PAF sound. So, nice. There you have it. So, how much are these going to go for? So these are priced at $64.99, and like I said, we've got three different versions of the 1960 60th anniversary reissue, and we've got uh, three, uh, sorry, two colors each for each version, two unique colors for each version, and each color corresponds to how you would see an actual 1960 age over time. So later in the year, the color didn't fade at all, just like this guy. It's got that wide tomato sunburst. Mm -hmm. Um, but early in the year, one of the the version one colors that we use is called Antiquity Burst, where you'll actually see the fading of the the red under the parts, which is kind of a cool little Easter egg. 
and we've never done that before on a production model nice. guitar. So. so what else did you want to show us today? I know you have yeah, all so, sorts of cool stuff there. But. So this is really the big uh, top story when it comes to Les Pauls, but there's mm -hmm. another huge story when it comes to ES models. So I wanted to show you uh, some of our new Made in Nashville ES guitars because, as you know, we moved production from Memphis back home to Nashville. Right. And uh, it was a huge undertaking. I mean, just we, moving our employees to Nashville, moving our machinery to Ma Nashville, and then really having to re redevelop and improve an already fantastic product range in Memphis. So it, oh, it, took, well. it took almost two years to get there, but now we're here producing ES guitars in Nashville, and uh, I'll, I'll walk you through them. Cool. Yeah, while you grab that, I just want to remind people that we actually came and did a new factory tour with you guys just after you reopened after the move from memphis and all that so people that's should right check yeah. that out and yeah i've seen that that's great okay so a lot of my friends a... in that video so here we have it this is a just a gibson usa es335 and same mentality when when we redid the range of solid body electric guitars we wanted to give you the classics, the greatest hits, especially in the original collection. So this is in our original collection, and this is an ES-335. Like, let's not put any crazy names on it. It is what it's intended to be. So uh, what makes a, a, a 335 is you've got the solid center block, uh, so it's semi-hollow construction, and that's a maple center block, and then the, the body's actually laminated, unlike a carved top, so it's gonna have uh, poplar and maple laminations. And uh, the necks on these are all kind of like uh, maybe lean on the little bit chunky side because uh, obviously we, we have to make a choice in what, what's true to the original collection and we always want to lean more towards like the golden era of the late 50s where the necks were a little bit chunkier. But they're really nice and round and comfortable and they've got the nice roll off on the binding. So a lot of that is carried through from Memphis where um, Mike Voltz and, and everybody there just did amazing work on creating entire product lines out of ES models, whereas now we've brought it back to Nashville and it's, they're just one part of our product line. Okay. So How many different colors are available on, in this model? Um, I believe four, four different colors. So we've got all the classics. You've got cherry, vintage sunburst, black, and uh, natural or blonde. Okay. So. What about pickups in these? So these are going to have a little bit hotter pickups. Um, they're kind of like, uh, you may have heard of like T-top pickups. So they're kind of the, the later 60s style of pickups where they're a little hotter. And you'll, you'll hear here, uh, you know, obviously I'm keeping the amp settings the same, but you'll be able to hear. So this is our treble pickup. And obviously compared to a Les Paul, you, you have a lot more girth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that sounds huge. The reason I, uh, I bought a 335 when I was uh, a teenager originally was because I loved the sound of B.B. King and all of these blues artists who just managed to get this huge, fat, thick sound. And little did I know, obviously, a lot of it is in your fingers. But um, just comparing that to the Les Paul, you can hear so much more, uh, I don't know, fatness, or yeah. I call it girth, but... Um, but yeah, so that's, that's that thing that the 335 can do and why a lot of people call it a burst killer. Um, not because it can do the same thing as a, as a burst. It just gives you a great range of, of tone that really put it on a class all of its own as yeah, far as I a great instrument. I think a lot of people just look at the body style and I mean, I think it's getting better these days, but especially probably back when I was a kid, um, I started getting getting into blues like in the 80s when I was like 15 or 17 or whatever, but it was mm -hmm. like Stevie Ray Vaughan and stuff. Sure. And then it kind yeah. of worked my way backward and, you know, Buddy Guy and, buddy guy and all that. But yeah. I think a lot of us, especially probably back then in the pointy headstock era, we saw those guitars with the F holes and it kind of made us think of like jazz sounds or right. something. But yeah. you can really roar with those. That's the thing is like not enough people know... Uh, how versatile these instruments are. And I, uh, I recorded an album a few years ago and all I used on the whole record was I had a Memphis 61 reissue and that, that was my main ax on the whole record. And, uh, and so these are uh, obviously made with the same, on the same machinery, same, um, in fact, same pressings as the original 1958 oh, wow. top and back presser. So a lot of great stories in these, but really they just speak for themselves. They sound great, they feel good. 
Can we, can we hear and, like the middle and neck positions too? Absolutely. Yeah. So what I like to do in the middle position is just roll up the, the bass volume a little bit because it, it tends to be with, with hotter pickups, uh, a little, you get a little more phase in the mix. Mm. to be at the same volume, so I like to separate them a little bit and you get a little more mid-range. And then you can hear the difference there in, in tone. Yeah. And you get the bass pickup, full volume. And there's your BB King sound. Yeah, totally. all them. But okay, so this is a Gibson USA um, original. Yes, 335. Yeah, original collection. Yep. Sweet. And how so much will this go for? This is uh, priced at, oh man, you put me on the spot. It is priced at $29.99. I don't have to check me on that one, but okay. I'm pretty sure it's $29.99 minimum advertised price on this okay. guy. Now, were there other guitars you wanted to show us, or do you want to tell people yes. where to... Okay, what you got yeah, next? Yeah, um, the custom shop equivalent. So, obviously, okay. if we're going to have a USA uh, generic... Well, I shouldn't say generic. If we're going to have a USA ES-335 in the original collection, uh, we have to have the one for the, the geeks. And the one I brought today is just one that we happen to have in inventory. It is an incredible instrument. It's I didn't want to put it down. This is fantastic, like... It gets you the sound, it gets you the feel, it gets you obviously the um, that classic ES-335 tone. But when you get to the historic reissues, obviously they're gonna be priced a lot more, but it offers you that exact same neck profile that you you may, if you've ever played a real 59, you'll feel like all those nuances rec mm -hmm. you know, represented. And we scanned a bunch of neck profiles to get that exact uh, look and feel. Sweet, so let's let me see grab it. that one real quick. So. This basically is, um, for the first time ever, like a true historic ES-335. And that's a term that we've used in the past for our historic reissue Les Pauls. And now we don't, we don't really use that term anymore. It's just all, we're using all of those parts, we're using all those principles in all of our regular historic reissues. But kind of our historic reissues at Memphis were segmented for so long. And now that we've brought them back to Nashville, we've got those along with uh, our historic Les Pauls being made side by side. So they're sharing parts, they're saying that sharing those same elements that we discussed in the 60th anniversary, 1960. So you've got those potentiometers, paper and oil capacitors, the unpotted custom buckers. And, uh, and then, like I said, we've scanned probably five or six 1959 neck profiles, a few 1961 neck profiles, a few 1964 neck profiles, and we chose the ones that we thought were most representative of each era. So we've got three different versions of a historic reissue ES-335s. This being the 59, it's available in Sunburst and Blonde, just like in 1959. In 61, they introduced Cherry, and they dropped Blonde. So you can get a, a, a Cherry or a vintage Sunburst 1961 that has the skinny neck profile, just like the 1960 version 3. And then in 1964, the necks got big again, and the, the rim shapes changed subtly. They became pointier. And that year is really famous, uh, especially in 335s, because Eric Clapton played a 1964 ES-335. Uh, but it, it also is just kind of a great year for electric instruments at Gibson to begin with. Uh, it's, the, it's the year before they moved to the narrower nut width in the 60s. So really it's like represents all of those great uh, uh, instruments that preceded it. And it just has a few little nuance changes in 64 nylon uh, saddles, little things like that. But gotcha. all in all, the biggest differences, are again, are going to be the neck profiles. It must be it's, really, not to sidetrack things, but it, it's got to be fascinating and almost like this, you're on a, you're solving a mystery. Sometimes they're like, or do you ever just sit there and wonder like, why did they change the profile this year do you guys have documentation yeah. that we actually why, do or? so i before i came to gibson these were my you know like th these are the big mysteries and now since joining gibson i've realized that every mystery you answer you would find, find 10 more, more mysteries <laughs> yeah but uh but yeah so we actually did find sales memos and we know that the net width change was developed as part of the sales team recommending a faster narrower uh, neck for their, their players, especially beginning players. Mm -hmm. And then by the late 60s, it was the opposite. The sales team was like, whoa, 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 we're, 
we're too narrow. We've gone too narrow. And do you think so, that was based more on like feedback from dealers, like at NAM shows or whatever? Or I think like dealers and artists. Writing or? Yeah, dealers and, and artists. I think a lot of, yeah, the trade shows probably played into it. Um, also a little bit of keeping up with the Joneses because there are other companies making really narrow nut gotcha. uh, Rickenbacker, for example. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But now they've really, they're, they're completely out of fashion. And on the collectible market, mm-hmm. people tend to prefer a wider nut width. But right. just as an example, I mean, there's other things like entire models were spawned just from, you know, comment from an artist or the Everly Brothers or mm-hmm. Billy Bird, Hank Garland with the Birdland, right, right. you know. So there's, there's all sorts of, sorts of cool examples. Interesting. Well, but so what, uh, are what, what are the pickups in this one? Um, also, custom buckers like the Les Paul, but you get... Same, same uh, ones? Or? Yeah, and so we'll, okay. you'll be able to listen to those, but you can really hear that clarity come through on a model that is probably more predisposed to, to feedback, like a mm-hmm. semi-hollow body. Right, right. But again, it's just y- y- you always remain in control with this thing. <laughs> So that's your treble pickup. Nice. Or actually, that was the mid position, sorry. Here's your treble pickup. So this is your, your versatile tone range, because you've got the country sound all day. And then yeah, the mid position, great. I like for lead a lot. And then the bass, I mean, you can do jazz all day. But you can also use your rhythm pickup uh, or your neck pickup for, for just all out rock and roll too. And it just uh, sounds fat and rich. Yeah, it does sound great. How much is that one going to go for? So this is sixty four ninety nine. Okay. Actually, sorry, I misspoke. That's the Les Paul. Uh, this is fifty one ninety nine. Oh, okay. Uh, minimum advertised price. And no matter if you choose a fifty nine or a sixty one or a sixty four, they're all going to be the same price. Um, it's interesting that it's that much lower than the Les Paul because I would think, again, I'm no luthier, that that would be a trickier guitar to build. Yeah, well, hollow. you know, obviously, uh, part of this is is influenced by the demand curve. Yeah, totally. So, but That's what I figured. also in terms of capacity, we're actually better equipped to build certain guitars a little solid bit quicker. Bo- probably but have more solid body solid body builders, right? That's right. And then also, I mean, th- what we're trying to offer is like a choo- choose your own adventure experience for our mm-hmm. customers. So. That's why I said whether you get a 59, 61, or 64, they're all the same price because uh, even though the vintage values may be different, they're all basically the same amount yeah. of construction and level of detail. Gotcha. But you get into these less paws, and it's also the materials because you've got a lot more s- solid, large, single piece uh, pieces of wood, mm-hmm. and then you've got your highly figured maple top. So you have to account for the you know the gotcha. price of all of that that you're paying for. for and to then get the these. laminate, I suppose, is less. Yeah, and then obviously huh? this being laminate, it's a little bit different. But yeah, really, at a custom shop, what you're you're paying for is that attention to detail right. that you expect. And uh, man, I wish I wish you could feel this neck profile because it's just hard to, to put down. I bet I, it's great. I briefly owned a fifty nine three thirty five, and it's bringing me back. Oh wow! Making me wish. <laughs> yeah, um, making I, me uh, want to yeah. buy one of these. <laughs> yeah. I like the uh, choose your own adventure angle too. Are you guys going to do like a marketing campaign that looks like the old little kids <laughs> books, choose your own adventure? <laughs> you know, that's not a bad idea. I, I definitely think um, that's the spirit of having different reissue years represented because people will say, well, if a 58 and a 59 are virtually the same, like the only difference are the, the fret size and then maybe the, ne- the neck uh, thickness, mm-hmm. uh, you know, why do you offer all these like, different reissue years within the product range. And it's just because it, it gives you that vintage ownership experience. Well, like, and people are fanatical about it, so exactly, give them yeah. what they want, right? Yeah, try telling the Les Paul forum board that, you know? It's like right, you, right. You, you, gotta, you gotta do the small They'll frets. They'll pontificate the forever about why. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so. Were there any other guitars you wanted to show us? 
You know, the, the one that uh, we don't talk about enough is the 339. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to show you one of those Okay. here behind me. All right, so here you've got a 339. This one is one of the figured tops, which you can find in the modern mm -hmm. collection. So obviously Gibson wasn't making this model in the 50s, so right. that's why this lives in the, the modern collection. But the what you get- The biggest thing is that it's a smaller body, yes. right? Yeah, and a lot of people have characterized these as uh, a mix between a 335 and a Les Paul, and you can't really mm. go wrong with that combination, obviously. But I have to say, playing this one today, I think there is something to that because they may be constructed differently, but this definitely has a more focused uh, sound like a Les Paul. So I'll play a little bit of that mm -hmm. for you. Okay. So like the like the um, ES three thirty five, it's got a laminate top, right? And a that's a right. Spruce yeah, same block same and, construction. It's literally okay. just a small smaller smaller More creature. Compact body. Or yep. Smaller radius on the yeah about there. Nice. And are then just, um, what pickups are in this one? Uh, these also have the same, same? style okay. of of the the T top style or T type pickups. So okay. yeah, it's uh, and this one's just gorgeous. Got that beautiful figure. Very nice. Yeah. But uh, I'm not normally, I don't normally gravitate towards the smaller body ES models because mm -hmm. I'm a larger person and I like to be just, just cover my uh, ongoing weight gain with a guitar. <laughs> but uh, no, um, but uh, so I don't normally gravitate to, the, to them. But in the studio, though, just the way they balance and, and the range of sound you get, I can imagine why so many people love these guitars. And they're, they're just comfy. great. You're on your lap, too, a lot of the time. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I'm finding here. But same neck profile here. It's a little bit chunkier. It's a little bit scaled down compared to the 335. Mm -hmm. um, but just really comfortable guitars. And then uh, I'll show you. It can definitely get the 335 tone though, through and through. Yeah, It'll get that BBB King sound on the rhythm pickup. Yeah. So how much is this basically the same price or like 51? This is uh, the figured model is a little bit uh, more, but they these generally I don't I don't want to um, make a mistake here on the pricing, but generally the 339 is less expensive than a 335. Obviously a little bit okay. smaller, mm -hmm. but there's a premium for the figured woods, gotcha. but you can get them with or without. Okay. So yeah, are, these are, are fantastic. These, are all of these guitars available right now? They are. They're available as fast as we can make them because they, there's been some pent up demand for ES guitars over the last couple of years, and, and we're well aware. So we're we're trying to make as uh, you know as many as we can make uh, comfortably and and with maximum quality. So we uh, you'll you'll probably start seeing them at dealers soon, but you you may have to act fast because <laughs> there's there's definitely pent up demand. Well, in the meantime, do you want to tell people where to go online to find out more about these and all the other stuff that Gibson does? Absolutely. Yeah, Gibson.com. you got to go to Gibson.com. You'll see some great Gibson TV episodes there, too, that you should check out about how we build some of these guitars. And uh, you you have our entire product range represented there. And then through there, you can find a dealer. Uh, you can purchase through Gibson. And uh, we'll we'll try to help you any way we can. We have 24-7 customer service. Oh, wow. So definitely, uh, you know, let us know awesome. if you have any more questions. Well, thanks for joining us, Matt. And uh, before you guys go over and check out Gibson.com, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any other uh, Summer Gear Slam videos, rig rundowns, lessons, all that stuff. And we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks, Matt. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.